What's going on there YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from Marvel, DC, and even IDW as well. But today guys, we are going to jump back over to Marvel Comics and cover another origin of a Spider-Man villain. You guys liked the last two, which was Scorpion and Tarantula. Well, I thought it would be a good idea to cover the origin of Harry Osborn becoming the Green Goblin. That's right, Harry Osborn the Green Goblin, the second Green Goblin in Marvel Comics. So, if you do like today's comic book video, please hit that like button down below and also subscribe for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. So picking up with Peter Parker, we see him hanging out with Mary Jane, everybody's favorite Spider-Man girlfriend character, which seems to be them just having a normal Sunday hanging out and living free. Where Mary Jane asks Peter about going back to his place. Of course, Peter is not going to turn down that offer. Now remember, in our last video that Harry Osborn has been suspecting that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. And in that video, he found out that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. Well, when Peter and Mary Jane arrive back at Peter's apartment, his spider sense goes off and then out of nowhere, a bomb goes off as well, blowing up the apartment of Peter Parker and Harry Osborn. Now, Peter and Mary Jane survive, except Mary Jane is badly injured from the blast and Peter knows he has to get her to a hospital soon. Also, Peter realized that with the police coming soon, they are going to search his apartment, meaning that they are going to find his Spider-Man outfit. And so Peter has to rush in, grab his suit, web it up, and throw it on a nearby roof so no one can find it and his secret stays safe. But we pick up Peter at the hospital waiting for the doctors to give him an update on Mary and Jane, which of course they tell him that she is okay and will get better. Now while he is there, he starts to think back to Norman Osborn being the Green Goblin and killing Golf Gwen Stacy. And so Peter starts thinking that maybe the Green Goblin is alive again and out there. And so you have Peter change into his Spider-Man outfit to go see if maybe he can find the Green Goblin, which leads to him to go to one of the oases of the Green Goblin, hoping to find him hiding in there. But when he walks through the place, it has that appearance that this place has been abandoned. But that is when Spider-Man realized that something is off. That is when he realized someone made the place seem like it has been abandoned. And so you have Spider-Man decide that he is going to wait until this new Green Goblin returns back home. Now the Green Goblin does appear and of course this begins a battle. Peter knows that this is Harry Osborn because Peter saw Norman Osborn die. Plus with the way Harry Osborn has been acting in previous issues and him not being around when the apartment blew up, so Peter knows his friend Harry's mind has snapped and he needs to stop him. And so of course this leads into a full on battle between the two of them. And for the sake of the story, Green Goblin is able to beat Spider-Man except that he is unable to kill Spider-Man because the weapon that he wants to use is out of power. And so the Green Goblin leads to see Spider-Man for another round. But then we see that a couple of days have passed and the Green Goblin is still out there and causing havoc around the city. Where we see him right now attacking a random truck for something. He does the usual knock out the truck driver and grab whatever he needs and then proceeds to leave. We learn that Peter has been out in the last couple of days trying to find Harry, but of course he is unable to do that. And so you have Peter decide that it would be best for him to just go home and get some rest until he remembers that Harry Osborn blew the apartment up. And so he goes to visit Mary Jane at the hospital instead. That is when Peter sees that all of the supporting cast characters are there. J. Jonah Jameson, Robbie Robertson, Liz Allen, and Flash Thompson as well. Oh yeah, and Aunt May too. 
but they're all there to check up on Mary Jane since she was put in the hospital thanks to Harry Osborne blowing up the apartment earlier. This was done to give us an update on Mary Jane to know that she is okay and getting better. And so Peter leaves to go handle the new Green Goblin problem. This leads into Spider-Man going to the scene of the crime, where you have Peter trying to look for clues that could help him find the new Green Goblin. Of course, he finds a few pieces, but these pieces don't really help him find the Green Goblin. Then the cops show up, which makes him leave before they can arrest him. This leads him to go on a search for Harry Osborn, where he knows he has to go back to the old home of the Osborns, which of course leads to Spider-Man fighting against Harry Osborn as the Green Goblin once again. Now, with every fight, we do get a couple pages showing the fight off, but this fight is actually showing that Spider-Man is stronger than Harry Osborn Green Goblin, where it seems that Spider-Man is going to actually be able to defeat Harry. Except Harry Osborn reveals that he had kidnapped Flash Thompson, Mary Jane, and Aunt May. They are being held hostages in different places. Now only one of them has a bomb attached to their chair. And so Peter has to hope he goes to the right person that has a bomb near them and saves them. And so he knocks out Harry Osborne and goes to Aunt May because that's the person he loves the most. Where of course, when he gets there, she's the one who has the bomb attached to her chair. And so Spider-Man has to use his webs to get rid of the bomb and Aunt May lives. But the story gets wrapped up with Harry Osborn being woken up by Spider-Man. Where Spider-Man tells Harry Osborn that he was able to save Aunt May and Harry Osborn's plan failed. Where you have Harry try to attack Spider-Man but of course fails, and Spider-Man knocks him out. This leads to the book closing with the police taking Harry Osborn away, thinking that he is some kind of crazy person. And this was the first time we saw Harry Osborn as the Green Goblin. Now, this is part of the video where I sit down and give my thoughts on about the book. To be honest, I like this book a lot because it gave us Harry Osborn as the Green Goblin. And this was the perfect way to bring in a new villain for Spider-Man. But the way they made Harry Osborn as the bad guy for Spider-Man was done perfectly. And the reason why I say that is because this story kind of, not kind of, it really does. It builds off what happened in the death of the Gwen Stacy storyline. We saw as a subplot that Harry Osborn took some drugs. And with him taking drugs, his life became to go down spiral. It got worse. His mind snapped. But after that part right there, his father died as the Green Goblin and Harry Osborn found his father dead on the ground but as the Green Goblin. And so with him taking drugs and finding his father dead as the Green Goblin, Harry Osborn's mind became broken. It snapped. Now, after that right there, we learn that he has been suspecting that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. But he could never find clues that told him, yes, Peter Parker is Spider-Man, there you go. Because news got out that Spider-Man supposedly killed the Green Goblin. And so it were getting out that Spider-Man killed the Green Goblin was Harry's father. Well, now Harry thinks his best friend is Spider-Man. His best friend killed his father. And we saw in our last video when Harry found different clues that say, oh my God. Peter Parker is Spider-Man, bam, right there, he was gone. He was so gone, he's like, you know what? I will become the new Green Goblin and kill off Peter Parker because Peter Parker killed my father. This was the perfect way to make Harry Osborn, the best friend of Peter Parker, a bad guy. And that's why I like this book so much. Now. Besides that, nothing else. 
and this is where we're going to end today's video so guys please leave me a like down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future also any suggestions on books i should read well please let me know in the comments below because you never know your suggestion could be a future video down the road but i'm out of here y'all and i'll see y'all next time later